Hello, we're doing another one of these. I'm just going to try to get either the Night Boss or Scuddy. I don't care which, as long as it isn't the normal one. We're doing this on difficulty 5 at the moment, which is as far as we've gotten. I'm not sure what every individual difficulty does, but basically they make operators cost more hope, they increase enemy stats, stuff like that. I am too lazy to translate them all and see, since either way I have to deal with it. Okay, so I understand the new starting powers a bit better. This gives you extra dice and makes the dice better. Normally you have dice that are from 1 to 6, with this they're from 1 to 9. And 6 is always the best outcome, so it's just extra chance to get the best outcomes. This makes operators cost less, give you, and then gives you extra bonuses on certain nodes, such as safe houses. This is the most broken one, but it just gives you a million items, and then you can roll over everything. I kind of like playing with this one, so I'll keep spamming it for now. I'll do the other ones eventually. Starting options are two extra dice. For some reason, dice are represented by triangles. Let's not think about that too much, since that would be a four-sided die. But the dice we actually have have six sides. This is one life, one hope, and we're going to get the key, which is used for certain events, because those are kinda rare. Best start is Defender, Sniper, or Vanguard, Sniper, and Specialist, but we'll pick something at random. This is mostly so I can avoid boredom, but also because four stars cost three hope, and one stars actually, sorry, three stars actually cost one hope. So we cannot pick something like a pinecone, a caster, and then spot. We don't have enough hope for that. So we'll take whatever free operator it gives us, just so we have a body. And then we'll get two four stars. That way we can avoid using river reserve ops. We need to make sure we pick stuff that can actually fight though. Because we really need some AoE power to fight through some of the stages. Basically, the choice is always between Indigo and Click for a first caster. Indigo is better at killing the Duck and Bear, Click has more DPS. We have Cutter and Rope. I uh, think I'm fine with going with Indigo. Cutter should melt everything. The first stage is whatever, no cleared. We have to survive the emergency stage though. We'll see what we get as a fourth operator. Some emergency stages might kill us, based on what we get, or the normal stages or whatever. Pretty sure Cutter solves this. Twenty-seven enemies. I think that means there's no extra item at the end. I don't think we have a ascension level, the extra difficulties, that actually increases the attack yet, so the enemies don't really do any damage early on. Eventually I'll clear all the ascension levels, but I'm not in any particular rush to do it. It happens when it happens. The emergency version of this stage is exactly the same. The archers just do a bit more damage and would kill Cutter because they hit for a hundred more and bypass the armor. Okay, we got a defender. That's a free win. We just pick Gummy, so now we have healing. This is a duck or bear event with the new dog guy. His gimmick is kind of annoying, but he's not difficult to deal with exactly. Essentially, uh, he's invisible 100% of the time, and he always stuns and hit. He's only visible when he's blocked, like any other invisible enemy. Um, so you just need to burst him in the moment he becomes visible. Kind of annoying to deal with, but not too difficult. Especially once you have more operators, it's very easy to burst him, because while he's kind of intimidating with the stun and invisibility, he has really low health to compensate for that.
Okay, let's burn the dice here. So, Gummy blocks him instead of Cutter. The dice makes enemies walk and attack slower. And one shot. If he was able to reach Cutter, he would stun her before she could take her swing. And if that happens, uh, she wouldn't be able to use her S1. Overall, I feel like this stage is much easier than the previous duck stages. I never feel like I risk getting killed when I do this. Whereas most of the duck or bear stages nice to could just straight up kill you if you're not ready for them. I think this is the hand for the AoE casters. I guess we'll find out. I'll check the... Archetype icons in a, in a moment. I can pay 6 ingot to get another key. 3 keys is enough, you don't get that many events with them either. So we don't want to take any more. Okay, so that's how Indigo's one looks like. Yeah, that's the caster. Something something 0 0.5 per second. I'm too lazy to translate it, but it's something to do with SP gain. Okay, so it's the same stage as before. Cutter plus gummy clear this. Last time we had 27 enemies. Observing the count now we have 29. I'm pretty sure one of those is an extra archer. But I'm not sure if we get two extra archers and that's it. Or if we get a decor bear as well. I suppose we'll see. Just need to remember to deploy Indigo before the end, in case we're getting a uh, duck incoming. And not use Cutter skill, so we have it ready. The way Archer's path is, it's safe to use this tile. So we'll just drop it now. Yeah, there's no extras. This stage isn't really dangerous among the starting stages. Notably they removed stages like the bear we had in IS2 that's extremely likely to kill you because there's no stage early on that does a high amount of damage so you're relatively safe. High golden go with just a bit of healing. Hey, can we get a hundred ingots, finally? Damn you. Some other time then. Okay, so that's the block plus one book. I'm not a fan of it, it basically only benefits Estelle. And Estelle isn't really an ideal pick. I have the option to roll on this, and then I'll be able to get different items. The medic pick is an option, but I already have Gummy and she will last me for a while, especially the T2. So we will reroll and see what else we can get. You reroll regardless of what you get, but higher rolls get you better items and more reroll. Okay, so that's what we wanna do. 50%, that leaves us with 6 and we can get the spinach. No sniper to upgrade. We got some buff uh, because we rolled a 6. Oh, I can't guess what the buff is by looking on it. I'll translate it later. So, this is the option to give up one life, and it gives you an item. 
This is the version of the King's Crown we had on IS2, but it's much better here. First, it has no negative outcome. It either gives you 30% attack for casters and 3% attack for specialist, or the other, or the same thing but reversed. 30% attack for specialist, 3% attack for casters. So as long as you have the life to spare, there is no reason not to pick this up. I believe this was 30% attack for specialist, but don't quote me on that. I'm too lazy to go and translate it and see. We're just heading straight for the emergency stages. The difficulty isn't too high, so we're not scared of them yet. We get two chests, so unlike in IS2, you have to actually kill them. You can click on them and see their health. There are mimic chests too, but they have a different design, so they're easy to tell apart. Neither of these chests are mimics. They have uh, basically their hands are show, show up on the side of the chest a bit. Okay, so I'm pretty sure the item I got buffs caster attack, judging from how high Indigo's attack is. I'm kind of curious what the buff I got does. I'll check it after this run. I should have just print screened it during the run. I could be checking it right now. Oh well, I'll do it in the next stage. It's going to take a while to kill the chest. Thankfully it spawns some troopers in the end, and we can just leave them alive. Or just leave a couple of crabs alive, that's fine too. No oh, damn, Indigo's doing damage. Okay, Gummy's kind of stuck on that guy. We just want to grab the chest, that's why we're leaving them alive. Probably got kind of lucky with crits. If she got a few more crits, she would have killed them before I killed the chest. Because of her model increasing her talent, her crit chance is actually fairly high now, and she does it all the time. It's much more reliable than it used to be, but that's kind of a problem. Um, you probably know this item, it's 50 attack speed when we're at 1 health. Now the lives are different, we got her life back, and we got a medic. I like picking chestnut up, he works well enough. Okay. So so we're just taking a picture of this, and we'll see what it does. Well, the stage is playing. Similar chest, but it returns damage when it's hit. It's kind of annoying, because if you hit it with a very high damage operator, they tend to kill themselves. Okay, his range isn't that good. We'll then have rope finish the chest off. And Indigo should be able to cover the other side. Oh, she gets stuck in the chest. That was a waste of DPS. Yeah, you cleared. That chest was worth 
4 ingots. Uh, this is a pretty decent item, as the operator health gets lower, their attack speed increases up to 60 or 30% health. There is another version of this item, which is much better in my opinion, where if the operator is at full health, they gain up to 60% attack. Sorry, uh, up to 30% attack. It's much better because ranged operators are kind of always at full health. We're going with Myrtle, of course. Translation is a bit unclear, but 30 seconds after the battle starts, all enemies have 30% attack power and 30% movement speed. So most likely it makes enemies weaker right at the start. There's only one downtime recreation event that I kind of don't like, so I'm not going to bother with it. We'll do the stage instead. Oh, since I have rope I can actually use the hose on the map. Probably the first time since I've played IS. Normal chest. I think the translation I got was kind of wrong. More likely it buffs the stat for the first 30 seconds and then they slow down. Yeah, that's correct. So for the first 30 seconds of combat, your operators have 30% attack speed and attack. That would be the correct translation. If you're wondering how I translated it, I just took a picture of the screen, um, cropped out the text and then pulled it out of the image and ran it through a translation app. The 30 second thing isn't bad. If you have some really dangerous enemy on the stage and some starting DP, you can rush them down pretty fast. Though it's fairly useless for the first and second boss fight. Great on Skadi though. Speaking of, we haven't gotten any of the outer endings yet. We can get them after the third floor apparently. So that's not critical. I kind of hate this stage because it's really long and very easy. So I barely have to watch while I'm playing it. This is the same kind of item as this one, but with a different effect. I think it had something to do with attack speed. I'm too lazy to go translate. I guess we're upgrading Rob then. Her model makes her do weedy damage when she pulls someone. Like we, we did us with S3, but it, I think it's art damage, buffing medics to give resistance or several lives. I don't care about resistance, if I did that, <laughs> got gotten pierced in instead. So I got a 1, meaning I'll get a different item. If I want to, I can reroll the dice outcome, um, so it, I can get something other than a 1. I guess we'll do that. We got a 2 instead. So we get to keep our item. It, if I didn't tell you the dice, I may have gotten a different more useful item to be honest. So maybe it wasn't worth it. Especially since it was my last dice. Okay, so you see the dots here? That means we can climb up and down the stages. Which is pretty cool because we can go, do the shop, and then climb up and fight the emergency node as well. This is the recycling stage instead where we can remove the lamp, but the lamp doesn't really do anything. So there is no reason to remove it, to be perfectly honest. All it does is reduce the light we have, but I haven't noticed any benefit to having high light in the first place. Maybe it changes enemy stats, but the difference isn't major. At least not major enough for me to see the difference.
The damage from the pool is pretty decent. More than you'd expect. Part of it is because of the spinach, but still. The 4-3 version of this stage is very easy. Floor 4 has almost exactly the same stage, but this tile here is a blue box, and that one is really annoying. One of the stages I'd rather avoid doing, when possible. When using a chain caster and having spinach, it's really important to time the skill activation while the shots are in the air, because then all of the shots get buffed and enemies tend to disappear. Honestly, the crab dudes are kind of harmless. Mostly their puffing is annoying, because nobody is going to cut her. So now we have to wait for everything to die. Maybe I should start using rope as one instead. It's probably more DPS. Um, squad limit, yeah, and then 2% bonus to some stat. All the squad limit items have some minor stat bonuses that you don't care about. Head off your meta, don't need you. I'm fine on AoE, spinach boots cutter is enough, so we'll get Umbreal. May would have been the better pick um, because of the spinach, but I've pumped May a lot in IS2. So I kind of don't want to. Oh, let's have the strongest rope ever. Why not? This heals you if you're missing any health for 4 health and then gives you 2 shields. Um, I might get it. 2 shields is fine with me. We're picking Ethan over Jaya because E2 Ethan is just broken. Might as well pick, it, pick this. We don't really care about supporter health or DP. Yeah, two shields. And we're getting chestnut upgraded. Okay, switching to rope S1, cutter S1. So the gimmick of this stage is, you basically get enemies that try to overload your block. You get a ton of enemies that turn around, and then you get um, enemies that take up your block with ranged attacks. They're kind of like Broodlords from Starcraft, where they spawn uh, small mobs on you. They're not really that dangerous, because they only target melee operators. most annoying thing about this stage is how limited the range tiles are, but these tiles here are perfectly safe. Because these dudes don't attack them. Only a caster that spawns at the end attacks them, and the caster that's here. But we can chill out for now. Kind of decent. I'll see if I can get some value out of shifters. That was more on the Umbreal crit than rope. Tanking a shot or two for Umbreal. Easy stage, but very annoying if you don't have healing or enough range damage. I guess that's true for almost every stage on floor 3, when I think about it. 
the higher level stages on IS-310 to spam a lot of enemies at Otium. Upgraded Eaton. Nope, we have no resources for that. We're going to be without hope for a while, considering we're just at 28 from 55. I think we won't level up from this fight, but we'll level up from the fight after it. The eggs look annoying, but they take forever to move, so they're not a big risk or anything. The emergency mode gimmick on this stage is that you have reduced DP gain. But especially if you have an elemental medic, this stage becomes a joke. The only dangerous thing about it are the ranged enemies, they're actually kind of hard to kill. Umbrio won't target them, because of her own DP. Okay, Rob kills them perfectly, no issue. Cutter will wipe the attack. The boss should be stowable, I believe. With Gumi plus a medic. Now that he's that tanky in the first place. Oh yeah, this dude isn't stable at all. Whoa. He now gets extra attack. Or maybe he doesn't. Why well, do I remember this dude having extra attack when he's below 50% health, but not having the effect for it? I thought he was going to one-shot Gummy, but he didn't. I'm weirded out. I think this made crowd control last longer. Stuns and such. Don't quote me on it. I forget. Oh, I did level up from that fight. Emergency fights give a lot of XP. E2 in cutter. You have a chance to get a random item. That item might be a curse. This is the dodge item. 70% attack if you dodge. Worked great with Eaton. Upgrade, an operator, 3 hope, get 2 dice, 3 lives. I don't have any dice, but they're not that critical. Might need them for some events to miss otherwise. 3 lives is nice at all, but I'm not going to die from leaking. I guess we upgrade someone. Because the difference between these dudes being E1 and E2 is so big. Usually I'd prefer to E to Umbrio, but we have increased attack for Specialist, and increased attack from that book, so we'll go with Ethan. He can get stupidly high attack, if something hits him. Like thousands of attack damage. Oh yeah, Rob, Rob can dodge too, I forgot. 5,000 damage drop. I forgot her dodge is actually kind of high now, because of the model increasing her dodge chance. <laughs> Maybe I'll st start using rope instead of Bee Hunter, if I want somebody other than Ethan to dodge it. <laughs> Not bad. 
How far away can you heal from? Three thousand two hundred attack, but he won't get to use it or eaten. The boss eventually rewards his bullets and then shoots some more. No, oh, I assumed he target the other one. Now another scanner comes from here, as long as he's blocked, the boss can't do anything. Oh, he'll shoot the 3000 damage bullet with Gummy, but she'll be fine. She doesn't care. Speaking of people who don't care. Even without the skill, 200... 10, 2250 attack. Pretty much melts all the trash. It's really useful. Because you can put him far away from your squad, so he can take all the aggro and murder everything. It's really funny. And we got to upgrade Umbreo anyway. Do I want to get Mei instead? It's probably better to pick Mei, because she's really good if you have spinach, but I like having a need to Umbreo, it's just fun. Um, you gain SP when you're hit, 6 hope and deploy limit or something. Now I guess I'll go with DSP. I'll level up right away, so then I'm not in risk of running out of ops. Another 6 dice. We never got an alternate ending, unfortunately. So this is asking for a key to unlock this path. This gives me an item, then an emergency fight. It's kind of meh, because there's a shop on top. And there's an emergency here as well. So I'm only getting a free item. But then I can pick multiple items from here. We'll go with top. Upgrade an operator, squad limit, 3 lives hope. Upgrading, Murdo. I wonder if Ethan can dodge the lava damage. If he can, he's going to be permanently buffed. This is a mimic chest. You can see how unlike the other chest it has like small arms sticking out. If you hit it it starts to walk towards your base. It will not take any lives if you leak it, but it's pretty strong so it will kill your operators if you're not ready for it. The cool thing about this chest is that if you wake it up, it will not um so with normal chests, if all the enemies die, the stage ends even if you still have chests. But if this chest is woken up, that's not the case. It will keep uh, going. So we can make use of that. And just not wake up the chest until we we're almost killed everything else. This is very easy to control with Umbreo, because she targets the lowest uh, defense enemy. And the chest definitely has the lowest defense. It's also an option to just plant a bullet in it early on. Because we can definitely murder it. Yeah, we can just do it right now. Screw it. That guy's kind of scary. Hopefully, we might murder the big guy soon. Okay, let's block him with something so we can DPS him a little. 
They're okay, he lost almost all of his health. We're fine now. There's two normal enemies coming. No, the Kurber. Now, the Mimic chest is awesome because we get 10 ingots out of it. It's the best chest to get by far. It's easy to kill and you get the most resources out of it. You just need to know how it looks like and be prepared for it. We also got two items because of this very Ingo power. So this is 15% Arts Dodge. And this is the other version of this item that I mentioned. If our operators are 100% health, it gives them up to 30% attack. The attack bonus lowers as their health lowers. Now the operators that actually DPS can very easily be kept at full health. So it just makes our team very strong. Well, completely for free. This stage is scary as hell. Okay, so... This is a gimmick that isn't on, on Ian yet. I'll explain it once we actually start the stage. It's basically the stupid plant enemies from the second event that has them. SN was it? We'll find out soon. It's not long. Basically, if you have operators on the creep, um, you take sanity damage constantly. And these fucks, um, they have dodge while they're on the creep and cannot be blocked. So they're very annoying. In the event that this thing is from, you have ways to clear the creep. But you don't have those ways on here, so you just kinda have to deal with it. For the most part, you just deploy someone on the tile that doesn't have any creep on it, and they can block them. And then it's just down to dealing with the annoying things, like the plants. We want to face our operators like that, so we can avoid most of the... We, we can avoid proccing the plants right here, because that could get irritating. If they just woke up in their face and nuked us. Umbrio is great in this stage, she prioritizes the X and cripples them early on. We can remove Myrtle, she's done her job. Oh, Umbreu didn't play her stun animation properly. Interesting. Probably because she was stuck in some particular frame of her attack animation. Squad limit and 1% attack speed. We don't really need a second medic at all, so no point in upgrading. We're getting May. We don't really need Pinecon. In IS2 she's great, but here there's a lot of stages that don't have good tiles. Oh, a free win. Great. Um, extra attack on snipers. Yeah, I'll take that. This is the Vanguard Relic. I don't care about it. Supporters don't care, casters don't care. Moving on. Three items. This is the other dodge item. 130% attack on dodge. So Ethan is a god now. We're taking that one. Sadly, we didn't get any other boss to fight. Basic 
6 ingots for a chance to roll some dice or something. You can get an item out of this. That costs me attack speed, so I don't want to. Moving on. I don't want to spend any ingots, so we're skipping the shop. I've never translated this, I don't know. You just click some options and get an item. That's been my experience with it. We'll just take the extra lives. If I took all the lives throughout, I would have had enough to leak the boss. This is again a stage with enemies that we don't have the mechanics on EN yet. So I'll stop a bit to explain them. Okay, so we have these helmet looking fucks. They don't do anything, they just have a super low range um, arts damage attack. If you have operators on creep, that uh, attack becomes gobu and does more damage. Kind of remind me of the snipers from... Actually, I don't remember the name of the event. The OD event, the rainbow team. They kind of do something similar. And then we have this dude here. When he dies, he spreads creep. So if you kill him, everything here becomes creep. But if we wait until he crosses the stairs and kill him here, then only this area here becomes creep. We get some trash mobs running down this lane. And then we have the annoying things with evasion that can't be block and creeped on this lane. So if you kill him on the outside, um, he becomes annoying as hell. Because those things have dodge, and it's just down to luck whether you leak or not. But all you have to do is just ignore this dude until he comes inside and murder him then. His damage is pretty decent, but it's nothing special. You can pretty safely murder it. And then, once you know that this guy should come in, you just set up all your operators on this lane. Especially with a large squad, this is just a free win. Do I need to retreat May to avoid killing him? Yep, go away May. You're too strong. You can see how they spawned with the dodge, but after a second they lost it. Well, maybe you didn't. I'll kill it a bit slower, so it's more obvious. Oh, this guy takes two block. I didn't know that. But whatever. So now this acting is going to try to kill Cutter. And fail miserably. Okay, yeah, it no longer has the... Does it only lose it when it's blocked? Let's go kill these things. Or maybe it's when they're stunned. I can probably look this up, but I'm lazy. And if I can just shoot them and have it work, who cares? You can probably find the exact me mechanics and game press. Or when the event comes to in, in a few weeks. Upgraded me. I'll go with the emergency. I kind of want to do this stage more because the recycle is useful and cool, but I want the extra item from this. This stage kind of annoys me, and I almost always forget there's a really annoying drone on it that goes kind of like this from the red box straight into the blue box, because it's an asshole. But other than that, it's pretty easy. Just deploy stuff and win. Well, maybe my cutter is a bit overleveled.
Oh, did they leak a dog? Whatever, that's what extra lives are for. I should probably stop dying to the drones. That's just me being lazy. <laughs> I love this item. So stupid. And now we just spawn stingrays from here. Which are very annoying enemies. Let's tank them with something other than the only person who can actually shoot at the stingrays. That was one of the sneaky drones. They either go like this or like this. Getting those SP on hit is so useful. That item combo is so retarded. He doesn't he's not even using his skill. And he could have had like a 30% attack bonus if he was at full health. It's so dumb. Even when he just works on Ethan, it's so dumb. I ended up having way too many keys. This gives us plus 15 res and we have one stack of shield, like Mudrock or Roberto, where they will absorb an instance of damage. 4 hope and 1 squad limit. Uh, I don't care. Too lazy to pick anything. It doesn't matter anyway. Now we actually want to roll at least once. This gives us some random crap, like a key we don't need. And when we exit it, we get our money back. We started at 32, so if we row again, we're going to be at 27 and still above 30 when we exit. Because it gives us 4 ingots. So no attack speed wasp for 2 rows. Kind of overpowered for this fight. No oh well. Just want to make sure I don't deploy Cutter first because I want the boss to be hitting Cutter. Because when she gets hit, she gets SP and then she murders everything. We we'll have for open Stingray duty. Umbrio in the middle of nowhere. Is that tile covered? Yep, yeah, it is. The wide red inch medic is awesome. Oh, well, you know, the elemental medic that has better range than the wide range medic. Does Gummy or Gavio heal more? Hmm, not sure. I guess I'll go with Gavio. If she dies, I'll put Gummy down. Works for me. Hmm. Oh yeah, Ethan should have been on the outside. There's two issues with him being on the inside. He steals kills from Cutter, so less SP, and he might slightly leak enemies. Well, we have 23 lives, so might as well leak something. Oh, that poor boss.
Now he gets a bigger AoE and does more damage. Usual stuff for a boss. In terms of winning, we don't really care. Oh, he was grounded. He's dead. Ethan will just murder him now. Because once he gets grounded, he stays grounded. Umbrio stunned him and that put him to the ground. Medic's dying. Just change bodies. As that happens. He seems to no longer be considered a... Uh, air enemy for Cutter. Once he's grounded, which makes sense, obviously, but it's always good to check stuff like that. No, seriously, I might just start picking rope. This thing is funny as hell. <laughs> the dodge is so dumb. <laughs> Why does rope have 4000 attack? I cannot get over this. It's such a dumb item. No, oh, that's a difficulty 5 then. Sadly, we didn't get one of the more interesting bosses. I might have to impose a ban on the dodge item in the future. <laughs> I'll see. Oops, it's an intro I can't read. Skip. It's so broken. I feel guilty for using it. But it's also fun as hell. <laughs> 